Making It, featuring inspiring personal stories of struggle, triumph, and success from America's small business communities. Hello, I'm Nelson Davis, executive producer of Making It, an award-winning small business TV program. The automobile business is one that most of us interact with just about every day. We love cars, we hate them, and sometimes we even lust after them. But always we like to think of them as reliable servants for our transportation needs. Today on Making It, we're dipping into the business of selling cars. We're going to travel to New Jersey and to Southern California to visit with two dealers of one of the best-known auto brands, Honda. You'll meet a couple of gentlemen who have put wheels on their personal dreams and who share their business stories with us. I love the passion of cars. I love the, the thrill of the cars. It is the engine. It's the styling. It's the feel. Every car feels completely different. It's the joy of the cars that I just enjoy looking at. I walk into my store every day and I look around, I just, I'm, it's the joy. Matt Tajian opened his first Honda dealership in 1994. Now, we have three locations, two Honda car dealerships, City of Industry in Glendale, and we have Orange County Honda in the City of Orange. We have approximately between the three locations chasing 200 employees. We do over 100 million in sales annually. Matt spent most of his childhood playing and working in his father's junkyard. It was my introduction to the car business. I can remember my dad's old tow truck where he would drag these cars into the junkyard. And my job as a kid was to take the radios out of the cars and put them on a bench and test them and see if they worked. And if they worked, put them on a shelf where he could sell the parts. This helped shape Matt for a lifetime of auto-related jobs and businesses. He sold used cars owned a gas station and towing company, and later owned a European auto dealership that he had to close due to the economy. It's very difficult to have to walk up and call the employees into a meeting and say the business is suffering uh, for whatever reason uh, that we're going to close the doors. And uh, because of how I got involved in the car business, I'm very sensitive to some of the people in the industry, your porters and things of that nature. Matt and his wife Linda had to reach an understanding between themselves to move forward. She was wanting to write personal checks to cover the payroll for some of these people for quite a while actually. And I finally said, honey, we have to stop this because if, if we don't stop this, we're not going to be able to cover ourselves. So um, it was very, very difficult to, to, to have to do that. Matt was actually semi-retired when he received a phone call regarding an unexpected opportunity with Honda. There was a store in another city that was closing through some financial difficulties back in the 90s. And a friend of mine came over and asked me, says, you're interested in a Honda store? And I said, sure, I can't afford a Honda store. Yeah, I think you can. So this particular store came about and unfortunately it, it was sold to somebody else. So about three days later, an individual called me and he introduced himself on the phone and he says, are you interested in a Honda store? I said, yes, I am. And he says, well, there's one in Diamond Bar available. And uh, where's Diamond Bar at the time? I didn't know where Diamond Bar was. So uh, he introduced me to the seller and uh, that was in, in, well, it was the beginning of 94. And we uh, reached an agreement and we actually took possession of the store. That was in July of 94. It was no easy task putting the capital together to buy the Honda franchise. When I met my wife, I owned a house up in Malibu and she was living down here in Cerritos. And so I sold my house and uh, had the funds from that and she had some funds and uh, her funds were more than my funds. And <laughs> we put them together and then borrowed, borrowed uh, like I said, a significant amount. And it was a scary time. I mean, I think we borrowed seven hundred fifty, eight hundred thousand dollars at the time. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. But it turned out it was a wise decision and with her support, it was a very good investment. Keeping the right mix of inventory is an important business strategy. We will always have on the ground approximately between 450 and 500 new cars on the ground. We sell anywhere from two to 250 new and another 50 used a month. 
So your turnover, you always have to have at least a month and a half to two months supply. Honda would like a few more than that to, to keep the proper mix on the ground, uh, colors and models and things of that nature. Diamond Honda makes a big deal when a customer buys a car. Unique to some other stores is uh, once they, they go through the process and they select their car and they purchase a car, when the paperwork is all finished, we bring them to the showroom and we have a big gong and we ask them if they'd like to uh, hit the gong. And they get pretty excited and we do an announcement uh, over the PA system that Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so just purchased the model of the car it is. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Matt not only got his love of cars from his father, he also learned his solid business philosophy. My dad was a pretty neat old guy. I mean, I just, uh, he, he, you know, I'd hang on his shirt tail going to his wrecking yard, and I remember him talking to people and how he treated people. And later in life, uh, uh, as I became older, he always treated people with respect, and he was always honest with people and he treated everybody the same. It didn't matter what they were, who they were, he treated everybody the same. And, and I believe that's, that's one of the things that he's instilled in me. As you saw, Matt works closely with a couple of family members, echoing his own upbringing around automobiles. Some of his employees are like family as well. He's worked with them since he bought the dealership in 1994. You know, Matt, to me, is living proof that dreams do come true with persistence, hard work, and a clear personal vision. Now, in part two of today's Making It show, you'll meet a retired football player with the New York Giants. He's notching up first downs now as a New Jersey Honda dealer. 